Joining us now, True Blue, Lord Saatchi, who is the chairman of Margaret Thatcher's Centre for Policy Studies. Before that, however, he was the architect of Mrs Thatcher's winning election campaign in 1979. And it's a long time ago, but, I mean, when you found yourself trying to market Margaret Thatcher, and nobody really had been brought into politics in that kind of a role before, um, there were people who, who obviously weren't very happy even to have her as their leader. Well, the thing is, John, um, we did very little really during that period. The great point to remember is that Mrs. Thatcher created or invented the Centre for Policy Studies, a think tank, before she invented us. And I think that, that tells you everything you need to know about the way that she went about her election campaigns, indeed her entire prime ministership, which was that she was interested in explaining her philosophy. Yeah, but you had she... a problem before she could get there. You had to sell her to the British public. No, and, and they were not so. used either to having a woman leader sure. of any party and be, well, there were people who said that her voice was difficult and that she was strident and all that, but what did you do about it? Well, all, all those things, are, all those things are, are really not the key point, I don't think, in terms of the, reason, the explanation for her successive election victories and for her iconic status today. I think that depends on the fact that she was interested in um, convincing people about her view of life and in causing people to um, accept her version of um, how life and politics should be conducted. Yeah, but I haven't got you in here to talk about her policies, which I think, you know, obviously people are going to go I on was for a long time. To that. I brought you in because you played a role which hadn't been seen in British politics before. Very and true. in this case, it was a quite a difficult role. Can't downplay it. You can't simply say, well, she was such a brilliant philosopher, such a great politician. Uh, I didn't need to do anything. I, what I, are you doing with all the money then? That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's the, that's the great point to remember, which is that it was her philosophy which won all these elections. It was her philosophy which has won the acclaim of the world. But you're not going to sit there and say to me, I actually didn't have to do anything at all. Um, I used to charge the Tory party an awful lot of money, but I didn't do anything at all. I, I'm saying exactly that, that we had to do very little. <laughs> On a we, good this day, is a great headline. Lord Such much. admits, I didn't earn a penny, but I got paid a lot. On a good day, <laughs> on a good day we, we would be a footnote in her history. But that's all. Our role has been hugely exaggerated. The, the important point was that she convinced people that her approach to life was the one that they admired and they respected. And they admired in particular, John, her motive. Now, today you see there's, there's lots of coverage about was Margaret Thatcher a hero, a villain, and people who think she was a villain have emerged today. Had um, parties, even. Had parties. Incredible. How, what then, did you make of that? I make of it this, that how are we to judge, then, this woman? There are some people who have parties, and there are other people who are, who are distressed and think she was a great heroine. How, how are we to determine which of those two is correct? I'll make a suggestion to you, if I may, which is that uh, let's apply to her the, the, the ultimate test which is the, the, the test that is applied in a court of law. And in a court of law, the, the law directs the jury. Mm -hmm. Here is the highest form of test we have. Directs the jury to concentrate on motive and but intent. And we... I don't when think, we motive, consider that, I don't think we motive is in any doubt. She definitely thought that she was, this was service and all the rest of that. I accept. But I still want to know what role you played because it, you can't just sort of say I didn't do a thing because I was old enough to be there and sure. be reporting and I saw your dark deeds behind this, the sure, scenes. Sure. You structured the campaign, you sorted out what she should look like, you sorted out how the photo ops should work. I, I, don't, think any of this is, I don't think any of this is really important. It truly isn't. Well, you're um, saying presentation doesn't really matter in politics. Yes, but I am then, saying But that. in which case, I mean, well, what, were we what doing was wrong with Michael time? Foote's donkey jacket then? What was wrong with Michael Foote and what was his philosophy? What was right about Margaret Thatcher and the reason she was able to win those elections, particularly the election when she became Prime Minister in 1979, was that she convinced people that her philosophy was good. Mm -hmm. Let me come back to the point about motive. If, if it's true that the jury of public opinion operates in exactly the same way as the jury in a court mm. of law, which is to examine what is the motive of this person. No, I accept that. They would find out that her motive was, or they would work out quickly, that her motive was very simple. Britain can be great again. Right. And, and now everything that f would follow from that, and we would see, yes, this woman is very sincere. Well, about I, what I she's tell you, doing. I've learned something, and that is the ad man doesn't want to waste time talking about how he does it. All he wants to do is sell the content, and you've done it. Thank you very much, Lord Saatchi, for coming in.